Okay, so in this review cast, I just want to go over the take-home quiz since you guys had just turned that in. Um, the first question that was given to you was that you have essentially a dicarbonyl compound. So there's an aldehyde, there is a ketone, and I went over this in class, but just for the sake of argument, I'm going to do that one more time. Um, we have an aldehyde here, we have an ester here. And the last one is that we have an ester on both the sides. And the question is that you have to arrange that in the increasing or decreasing order of um, acidity. So in the in, in the quiz I asked increasing order, and you were given this was one, this was two, this was three, and this was four. Realize from class in this case, we have two aldehydes, so these are not sterically hindered at all, both of these ends, they are not sterically hindered. Um, and also, oxygen being more electronegative is going to pull electrons towards itself. There is no R group, so there is no inductive effect going on. So, you can say that the electrophilic character of that carbon um, is going to be maintained, and since both of the groups are aldehydic groups, essentially the alpha hydrogens are going to be extremely acidic in this particular case. If you compare that to the ketone, because of the hyperconjugation, because of the positive inductive effect, it's going to quench the electrophilic character at this carbonyl a little bit um, to some extent, and so uh, the positive charge here is going to get nullified a little bit, tad bit, on both the sides. And hence, if you compare two with respect to one, it's going to be less acidic. And if you compare all those with um, the ester, in case of the ester, we have actually the resonance that's going on between the three atoms. And so for that reason, uh, the extent to which the electrophilic character is quenched is actually the greatest. So one can safely say, because of no inductive effect, no inductive effect, no resonance in one. One is the one which will be maximum um, acidic followed by two, followed by three, and four is going to be least acidic in this case. The next question in this um, in this particular set was that you were given, you had to write down several mechanisms. So you were given that you have an aldehyde and you have two moles of that, and you're treating that with a pretty strong base, like sodium hydroxide. Ethanol is the solvent, and you end up with an aldehyde, an OH, and the methyl group is hanging off. So realize this is nothing but aldol condensation. And you can identify that because uh, you're starting with two moles and you're treating that with a base to generate um, the aldehyde and a beta hydroxy system. So that was the aldol system, all for the alcohol and aldehyde for the CHO. Um, recall from class that it's the alpha hydrogens that we are going to um, use to participate in the reaction. So one of the molecules is going to react with the OH. So your first step should be to pull off one of those hydrogens. Electrons will move towards uh, oxygen, so that will give you an enolate. The hydrogen of the aldehyde is still intact. And now you're going to show the reaction with the other molecule, which is going to act as the acceptor. So the donor is going to carry out the attack electrons will move towards oxygen and you will end up with and it's a good idea to maybe number these just so that you can follow this is one this is two this is three this is four and let's say this is five this is six this is seven and that's eight um, so you're going to get the attachment is the point of attachment is the alpha um, carbon and the carbonyl of the acceptor. So if I were to number, I would say those will be, this is 8, that's 7, that's 6, that's 5, this is 4, this is 3, this is 2, 
and that's one so the new bond that gets generated is right here the negative charge is going to simply pull off the proton from the alcohol so ETOH it's going to pull that proton off um, and you're going to end up with the beta hydroxy system just like that and there is a hydrogen so if we are going to heat it um, it could go through the um, loss of water but in this case I just was supposed to stop at the aldol so uh, this would be it uh, the next question is Fischer esterification so I'm going to draw the respective COOH OH and HCl and that's giving us oxygen plus water um, realize what's going to be the first step for this you have the carboxylic acid you want to generate the corresponding ester is being done in presence of trace amounts of acid the acid is basically added to carry out the activation of the carboxylic acid so show the protonation so that it gets activated such that you have oxygen with a positive charge OH and that is where your alcohol is going to attack just like that and when that happens OH OH oxygen with H and 3 carbon chain so that has a positive charge right now the CL can come back in and pick up that proton and give you the species and HCl will, will get generated again um, now your aim is to basically and you could also show that by the way you can also show that um, um, you know simply uh, through a one one two three so one three shift of the proton you can even show it that way if you want to uh, or you can show it stepwise so that you get a protonated uh, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. I don't want to create any atoms, so it's a good idea to just number them. Sometimes your height, your hand just slides a little bit, and all of a sudden you realize there's a new carbon atom. It's a different molecule altogether then. And now simply, uh, simply move the electrons, let water leave. First, it's going to remain protonated, and then the H2O can pick up that proton and generate the the free ester at the end of the day. So, um, so that will be your 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 ester formation, and that's Fischer esterification. Okay, let's go forward. There was another question where you were given acetone and it says on the arrow, even though it doesn't say the two, but it says on the arrow that you're supposed to do an aldol in presence of OH negative and water as the solvent, so something like sodium hydroxide perhaps, and you're supposed to fill in the blank and you're given that you are adding uh, H3O plus and heat and something else happens and then if you treat that with diethyl lithium cuparate something happens and then finally if you treat it with NH2OH what happens in that case so you have to fill in the the blanks basically uh, realize if it's an aldol then of course again you're going to generate the enolate so it will be the negative charge that will that will come up at the alpha position and this is going to participate with another molecule so I'm just going to color code that a little bit so you can see the acceptor and the donor and the attack will take place and um, electrons will move on top of the oxygen and you're going to end up with so this is my alpha hydrogen which is forming a new bond let's show the negative charge first let's do it stepwise 
and so your new bond is maybe I can make that in green it's right here okay and this negative charge is going to simply pull off a proton from water so you would end up with this molecule so it's a beta hydroxy always remember this is alpha this is beta it's always a beta hydroxy system and so your first structure should look like an OH and two methyl groups attached now the second step says that it goes through um, a reaction with acid and we are supposed to heat it recall from class I said that in that case one of the hydrogens at the alpha position would be lost along with the OH so that product will look like an alpha beta unsaturated um, ketone in this case and since we are treating that with lithium cuprate recall uh, from what chapter end of chapter 19 we learned that um, that essentially the addition occurs and I should probably erase that the addition occurs the addition occurs at the the fourth position so that's a one uh, four addition reaction where this entire alkyl group one of those is going to be delivered at position four so you will show that as a negative charge double bond and the ethyl group and then that will come back in and give you the resonance stabilized so this is what you'll get and now your final step is that you have to carry out the reaction with hydroxyl amine so that's going to happen specifically at that ketone so you're going to end up with a double bond NOH and the reason for that is because you're basically going to remove um, the H2 and the O that is going to be removed that is going to be lost and what's remaining is going to be your product okay and then I gave you some prepare questions and the first one was that you had to prepare um, cyclopentyl propyl ether from propanoic acid so you have to start with propanoic acid and you have to generate the cyclopentyl propyl ether realize this side of it is a is a secondary system so the rule for Williamson ether because Williamson ether is one way that you have learned uh, to go about this recall that you cannot actually use the um, bromo cyclopentane in this case so you have to do something about that you have to probably start with the corresponding um, alcohol so keep that keep that um, oxygen intact so how would you go about it the first step would be simply reduce it so go from the carboxylic acid all the way to alcohol is what I would do and then since when you carry out the disjunction you can either cleave it right here in which case you will have to start with the cyclopentane and the bromine and pentanol alternatively you could have it uh, the disjunction on the opposite side and that would mean that you will have cyclopentanol and bromopropane like I said since this is uh, secondary you don't want it in the format of the uh, of the bromocyclopentane because these will be more susceptible to elimination because they are secondary and whenever you have a secondary and especially for the case of tertiary we never want to, to go that route so here you basically will keep your alcohol um, and you will treat that with PBR3 because we are going the second route we are going, you're going to use uh, PBR3 or you can use thionyl chloride if you want to to generate the uh, bromine at, uh, at this position to remove the alcohol substitute that for the bromine and then treat that with cyclopropanol which was once treated with sodium hydride that would give you the propoxide that will attack from the back bromine will leave and you're going to end up with the desired uh, ether alright the second problem was that you had to generate one cyclohexyl ethene 
from 2-cyclohexyl ethanoic acid. So um, hopefully you can see that the 1 and 2 have interchanged and the, that's just a rule following the nomenclature. But you have to basically get rid of the carboxylic acid and somehow introduce the double bond. One way to do that would be if you are able to reduce this all the way to the alcohol. And you can do that using lithium aluminum hydride again. That will give you the alcohol and now just subject that to POCl3. Pyridine, 0 degrees Celsius. If you don't like that, you can always use concentrated H2SO4. And that's just fine. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the last one. It says 4-ethyl-4-heptanol. So... Heptanol would mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 4 ethyl and 4 heptanol is this molecule. Uh, and that has to be generated from propanoyl chloride. So realize that if I were to provide, if I, if I look at this molecule, the molecule is kind of symmetric right around here. You have essentially one, two, three carbons on one side. You have one, two, three carbons on the other side. So it's exactly the same. That means that you have to deliver these propyl groups somehow on this propanoyl chloride. Also realize if you look at position one, um, you have, you know, I'm just going to call this five prime and six prime. So hopefully you can envision that if you somehow had, if this was the group, if this was the set of the atoms, Let's use this. If this part was the, your initial um, carboxylic uh, group, um, you could use the Grignard reagent twice, two moles of, of, of that, to deliver the two uh, propyl groups. So I'm going to treat the propanoyl chloride with two moles of MgBr and follow it with hydrolysis. So in the first step, the acid chloride, this negative, is going to attack electrons will move you will first get when electron comes electrons come back let's write stepwise just so you can see that um, negative charge here we have the propyl group that's added Cl still intact electrons come back Cl leaves so that is my ketone right there and now that ketone will go through the second round of this addition and that will bring in the second molecule and that's your final product the next question was that we have three methyl cyclopent two in one own that's a long okay so one two three four five that's what it is 3 methyl cyclopent 2 in 1 own. Um, and I'm going to synthesize that from 2 for hexane diol. So hexane diol means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 2 and 4, is it 2? Oh, 5, sorry. 2 and 5. 2 and 5 hexane diol. So that's what we have. Um, hopefully, you can see that. Um, this could come from an aldol condensation since it's an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and the only one method that I have given you is through an aldol so um, and in order to get an aldol you are supposed to uh, basically have um, a ketone or an aldehyde in this case it's a secondary alcohol on both the sides so if you treat this with PCC you're going to end up with the ketone and when you subject that to intramolecular aldol, so treat it with NaOme, NaOH, whatever you want, followed by hydrolysis and heat. We actually talked about this in good, good, good detail um, that this is going to go through an intramolecular aldol on this side so that you get a one, two, three, four, five carbon uh, uh, ring. And that's going to first give you an OH right here. And then the OH and the H will get cancelled off because we are treating that with acid and heat. And that's going to give me the desired product.
and the last question was that you had to start from acetone and you have to convert it into 2-methyl 2-octanol so you had to convert it into 2-methyl 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 um, so realize that it's a ketone that we have it's a pretty simple reaction it's a ketone if you simply treat that since this is a tertiary halide if you simply treat that with octyl one two three four five one two three four five so you have essentially this part you have to deliver one two three four five and six so I'm going to say MGBR and further treat it with hydrolysis and that's going to give you the desired molecule okay I'm going to go through some box problems and then call it good so another four minutes or so um, if I have let's say let's say I have cyclohexyl bromocyclohexane okay that's what I have and let's say I treat it with sodium cyanide and I treat it with hydrolysis I'm asked what will it generate I'm treating that with magnesium and ether 0 degrees Celsius that gives you what so sounds like that's Grignard reagent and that also gives you the, the first box what would you put for reaction um, and suppose I treat this with maybe deuterium labeled so deuterium labeled CD3OH okay and H2SO4 this is just a fancy isotope nothing really nothing big about it um, I'll just go through it as to what you will get so suppose this is a box problem all right um, the fact that it's bromocyclohexane with sodium cyanide hopefully you can see that this is going to carry out a substitution um, at this position bromine is going to leave and we're going to hydrolyze it so when you hydrolyze it should go all the way to the carboxylic acid and the reason why I know that's going to happen is because I'm treating later on with an alcohol in presence of a base and you know that an alcohol reacts with the carboxylic acid and in presence of an acid that's our Fischer esterification reaction another clue to this is that when you treat it with magnesium and ether that's going to give you the Grignard reagent and you know that Grignard reagent when treated with CO2 followed by hydrolysis gives you the carboxylic acid so uh, we, we have our answer essentially uh, if you would have used, you, you can't stop in this case at the amide level uh, for the cyanide hydrolysis. You have to go all the way to the carboxylic acid. You can't stop at the amide level because you know that amides would not react with um, the CD3OH. Now, the CD3OH is it's just a fancy way of just writing methanol. Okay, but in this case, we have a specific isotope for hydrogen. Um, so, uh, all you have to do now is... Uh, basically uh, say how this Fischer esterification takes place so where does this D where does the deuterium essentially land is that actually the part of the ester or is it not and so hopefully you can envision that when the activation of the alcohol or the carboxylic acid will occur essentially the alcohol is going to attack and you're going to end up with um, the C double bond O O C D three so that will be your your desired ester in this case okay and the last question let's say you're given and I'm just trying to give you you know as many examples as possible for the Eldol and application for that so I am giving you I'm showing you here that this is a starting molecule and I'm treating that with a base realize that the alpha beta unsaturated um, 
ketone or aldehyde that is not as electrophilic so that is not the one which is going to participate in the alpha deprotonation or the enol enolate formation for instance you have two possibilities one that the enol enolate gets generated here the other possibility is here um, and what you should also ideally see and let me remove maybe this part so you can you can perhaps see a little bit better uh, uh, you hopefully are able to see here that um, you have the carbonyl which will pull electrons towards itself and that will essentially pull the double bond towards itself so this fourth position is actually pretty electron deficient so two things can happen either the alpha a can interact or alpha b can interact to give you a a, a two uh, bicyclic uh, compound essentially you have to go with which one will give you a better cycle so if you show it using a um, you're going to get an O negative double one here one two three and we have the one two and three and so the three is connected to Three has attacked the fourth position, and you have the COCH3. Um, and when this comes back, essentially will pull a proton off, uh, and your overall product will start looking like C double bond O and a five-membered ring. Hopefully, you can see that one, two, and three, and then four and five. Uh, on the other hand, if you use the other side, so let me use a different color for that. If you use the B side, so this is what happens in A side. In case of B side, you're going to end up much the same way. First the enolate, and then 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. Also go through the ketone. And then, uh, so that's 4, this is 5. And that five is basically going to participate in bond. So that's going to give you seven-membered ring. So between seven and five, hopefully you recognize that the uh, five-membered ring is more stable as compared to the seven one. So your answer in this case will look like C double bond O and a COCH3. So it's similar to that intramolecular aldol reaction that we uh, that we did the other day. In this case, it's it's not going through the loss of water, but rather uh, just, uh, you know, the gain of uh, the proton, the way we learned um, in the end, towards, uh, towards the end for chapter 19. I think that'll be all. This is already about 30 minutes, and then I released another 11 minutes earlier. Um, so go over this material, and hopefully you prepare well for this upcoming test. Good luck.